and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I am Barry P. Cook, and I've got some entertainment related news for you. And there's a little discussion I want to have with you about some entertainment uh, that has been released recently. But uh, let's jump right in with the news. If a new rumor is to be believed, it sounds like Margot Robbie could be headed to the small screen as Harley Quinn in an HBO Max limited series. We got this covered is reporting that the streaming platform is considering a limited series for the anti-heroine. They also claim that there are no clear plans in place for the character uh, once the Suicide Squad sequel hits theaters. However, Warner Brothers still wants to keep Robbie uh, on as the character because of her popularity with fans and her genuine passion for the role. Of course, uh, there's already an animated Quinn series on HBO Max, which I guess was just renewed for its third season. Uh, so that could make things interesting. Um, Kaylee Cuoco plays uh, the part on that uh, series. And, um, you know, I don't think anybody would necessarily be confused because obviously the storylines and plot lines and continuity would be different. But uh, sometimes franchise copyright holders convince themselves that audiences will be confused if two different versions of a character or a set of characters are depicted in different, uh, you know, um, efforts, be it big screen versus small screen or two things on the big screen or two things on the small screen involving the same subject matter. Uh, and so they generally don't like to have that occur. So it, it, could the Harley Quinn animated series, uh, animated series be done after its third season in order for this, uh, you know, limited series to be put out? I don't know. You know, things like this have affected casting decisions before, just as an example, because uh, reportedly, the reason that Grant Gustin was passed over for the Flash movies in favor of um, Ezra Miller is because he plays the Flash on TV and the powers that be were concerned that there might be confusion. Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, th this is a thing that might be happening and I think that would be great. I love uh, the Harley Quinn character. I really like uh, Margot Robbie's portrayal. I think it's closer to that of Tara Strong, who is uh, the best ever Harley Quinn, the originator of Harley Quinn, than uh, Kaylee Cuoco, who um, does a good job as the character. She plays the character a little differently. The character's written a little differently. Um, and it took me some time to warm up to it, but I like that version of the character as well. It's just that my preference is for uh, Margot Robbie if we can't have Tara Strong. I look forward to this uh, series coming to be if in fact that is what's going to happen. Keeping with DC Comics news, according to Deadline, the CW has a new series centered on a Latina superheroine in the works. That would be uh, Wonder Girl and it would be based on a version of the character created by Joelle Jones. Written by Dalen Rodriguez from Queen of the South, Wonder Girl tells the story of Yara Flor, the offspring of an Amazonian warrior and a Brazilian river god who battles the force of evil with her newly discovered powers. Now, this would be a different version of Wonder Girl than the Donna Troy version we've seen before, most recently in uh, live action on Titans on the DC Universe. Uh, Flor would be the first Latina superheroine to front a DC series. And again, this brings up that issue of uh, confusion. Now, I don't think people will be confused, but I wonder whether some uh, studios or, you know, copyright holders ever um, think about that stuff uh, or think about it as much these days as I've heard they've thought about it in the past. At least in this case, um, you know, it's a different... Um, version of the character completely rather than the same character just being played by a different actress. And, um, you know, Marvel Comics has had success with the Miles Morales character as Spider-Man. So um, to differentiate this Wonder Girl from the Donna Troy version by saying that it's Yara Floor, um, 
I guess would make up the difference. I don't know. I wonder why they're so keen on, you know, why not just do the Donna Troy version? Does that go back to the confusion thing? Who knows? Are there now two versions of Wonder Girl in print? I don't know. I've always liked Wonder Woman. Um, I'm, I'm interested in Wonder Girl. I very much like the portrayal of the Donna Troy version of the character that was on Titans. So um, I would watch this just to see how it is. And, uh, you know, we'll see if it uh, comes to pass. Sometimes they announce these projects and then they don't actually happen. Um, especially uh, when it comes to Wonder Woman, right? Because a pilot was shot for a Wonder Woman series um, a few years ago that never made it uh, to air. So who knows? Sticking with the subject of Wonder Woman, it has just been announced that Wonder Woman 1984 will be released on Christmas Day this year and will be uh, both in theaters, uh, I guess where the studio figures that will be uh, profitable, where that makes business sense, but also on HBO Max uh, on the same day, which is cool because I have HBO Max and I really wanna see this movie. And if I can do that without having to expose myself to even a low risk of catching uh, the uh, you know what, then I'd rather do that. Can always see it in a theater uh, later, hopefully, if ever there's a re-release. So um, that's happening, can't wait to see this movie. But uh, moving on from entertainment news, <clears throat> I wanna talk about a situation that's been going on for a few days now uh, regarding The Mandalorian. Apparently, Canadian-American feminist media critic Anita Sarkeesian, if I'm saying that correctly, Anita Sarkeesian, uh, was a little disturbed by the armor that Katie Sackhoff's Bo-Katan and her fellow, female, uh, her fellow female Mandalorian were wearing in the most recent episode of The Mandalorian because it, to use her sort of word or teach the word that's been bandied about on the internet to describe this armor because it's boob armor. She's annoyed because it seems to be structured to accommodate the more, shall we say, bountiful chest of a woman, in this case, Katie Sackhoff and her female, uh, her fellow female Mandalorian, as opposed to not doing that as opposed to being like a straight down with no sort of outward curvature to accommodate the actress's chests. And I guess this is because she thinks it was done to, I don't capitalize on women's curves and to sexualize the character or to titillate men, or to draw the male gaze, as they say, uh, you know, to benefit the show somehow, because it's got this boob accentuated character. I have to be honest, I didn't even read her comments, because the idea that this upsets her is just ridiculous. You know, in this particular case, because as you can see from, you know, pictures from the show, which I'm going to uh, toss up over there, it's not like it's over the top, right? And certainly in other media, across all kinds of, um, you know, distribution channels, TV, films, comic books, anime, video games, the so-called boob armor, boob armor has been very explicitly done. Uh, or even, I should say, more explicitly done all the way up to very explicitly done. Uh, in, I guess it was last year or the year before, Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Evangeline Lilly wears a superhero suit that like form fit 
her individual boobs. And so it's like she was naked with armor painted on her, you know, the, the, her clothing painted on her. This is also true of depictions of uh, the female commander Shepard from uh, Mass Effect uh, video games, the Mass Effect video games, where her individual boobs are sort of accentuated with a form-fitting sort of chest plate that she's wearing. The armor in The Mandalorian is different because it doesn't do that. It just comes down, juts out, and juts back in. Um, in the Thor films, there's a character that's wearing, a female character that's wearing an armor breastplate that does the same thing in an even more accentuated way than the two examples I just gave you. It, it like for, It's form-fitted to her individual boobs such that they stand out as individual parts of herself. And I could see where someone might look at that and go, why are they sexualizing these characters? I mean, we know why, but someone could look at that and say, yeah, it's a little crazy. Uh, in, in anime, there are various characters that have this sort of individual form-fitting, you know, individual boob form-fitting armor. And of course it's crazy and laughable, but I don't think that's the case with the Mandalorian. I think they made a simple, you know, chest plate for the character, as simple as it could be, and still fit her. They didn't go out of their way to like, you know, come down and encircle each boob and make it stand out on its own. It just, it comes down, it juts out a tiny bit and juts back in to accommodate the actress's chests. And you know, there are women serving in the military, at least in the US, who will tell you that they'd really appreciate armor like this because the armor that they have is uncomfortable in the way that it presses down on their chests. There is such a thing called a sappy plate. It stands for small arms protective insert. And it's used uh, in body armor, but it, it can be removed and, and placed back in. And there are other kinds of these inserts that are for heavier weapon um, resistance. But they're straight up and down and flat. And when some women place these plates in their body armor, their, their vests or whatever, it presses down on them, you know, too much because they are, I guess, maybe a little more well endowed, uh, you know, in that department than some of their coworkers. And it's not a one size fits all thing. And they feel uncomfortable because it, it presses down on them because it's not more form fitting. So this is not just something that, you know, misogynistic guys or mansplaining guys are coming up with to justify this kind of armor that, you know, accentuates women's bodies because they like looking at women's bodies. This is a real thing, a real issue in the real world. And to me, the depiction of the armor on the Mandalorian on Katie Sackhoff's Bo-Katan car character and on her uh, fellow female Mandalorian characters' um, costumes is perfectly fine. It's respectful of them as women in that it doesn't overly accentuate their chests in a way that sexualizes them, but it also accommodates their physical characteristics in a way that they wouldn't be uncomfortable in the costumes and in a way that the characters wouldn't be uncomfortable in their armor in universe, which one would think is, <clears throat> you know, important to believing that the character can function the way a Mandalorian 
or other person in, you know, a, a situation where they'd have to go into battle with armor would need to be able to function. So I think this person is barking up the wrong tree here. If they want to talk about boob armor, as it were, and, uh, you know, how it's exploitative of women, then she should find better examples. And there are better examples, as I've pointed out, because this isn't it. This is just the most high profile, you know, woman uh, in armor that's currently uh, on TV or in the movies. And she latched onto it to make an argument because she's a strong feminist. But I think she's doing herself a disservice because the reaction to what she had to say uh, from people who realize she's kind of nuts <laughs> on this issue has been swift and prolific. Um, you know, and other people have uh, <laughs> reacted to her the way I have before I've reacted to it. So uh, it's, it's kind of a thing. And uh, I think she did herself a disservice in the long run by coming out with this insanity. But there you have it. So that's it from me uh, for now. I will be back uh, whenever news breaks. And my review of Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 6 is coming up uh, in my next video. Until then, my friends, peace and long life.